What up players, it's Warbots Tail up in this mud. Welcome to day 30, the final day of my Warbots painting challenge for Project Dwarves. Now let me show you what I finished and what I wasn't able to finish. Uh, first thing that I did finish were oh, these two cannons. One is obviously bigger, this is the one from the cannon kit. It's got more detail, it's got more pieces, it's bulkier. I base coated the silver with, or actually the whole thing I base coated with bolt gun metal. Then I went, went over the gold detail with my dwarf bronze. And then I washed everything with bad at black. And the gold I washed with ogren flesh. So it had a little bit of red tinge to it and it didn't obscure the gold detail with a lot of dark ink and wash. And then I highlighted the barrel and all the parts I wanted to be really shiny with micro silver. And I did the same thing for this Battle for Skull Pass cannon, which is a lot smaller. It's just one piece, it's a lot simpler to, to, to put together. Just two pieces snapped together rather. Whereas this one, for those of you who don't have a dwarf cannon or haven't put together any Warhammer Fantasy Battle, artillery pieces came on a frame with a whole lot of other stuff. So I was already pre-built, so I couldn't choose the organ gun. Might have gone with the organ gun since I already have a cannon that comes with the dwarf. Uh, battalion box, but there you go. I'm gonna have three cannons now, so pretty happy with that. Uh, I've also got my just about completed grudge thrower here. Same painting recipe, just about. And there's the little grudge stone on the back. I, gave, I made the hand golden. I know on the Games Workshop website it's silver, but I decided to go with a gold hand just to make it pop a little bit more. And like I showed you earlier, the rock is magnetized. The rock is actually the only thing that I haven't painted yet. I just base coated it with carrot and granite. I still have to go over it with some bad at black and then highlight it dry brush with a fortress gray or codex gray. So let's go to the stuff I didn't finish. I was able to get all the base coats and the washes onto my, my crew models. The only thing I haven't done is highlight and paint the different colored beards yet. Which is too bad. I also didn't do any of the fine detailing like... Um, the work on the clipboard and any f other fine scroll work. The fine cast grudge thrower crewmen, I'm going to show you something that um, I noticed when I was putting it together. This guy, he's cranking something, but when you get the grudge thrower model, there's nothing in line for him to crank. Like his crank doesn't, when you lay it on a flat surface, it doesn't line up. See how the base... I, I think this crank is supposed to go there, but the only way it'll go there is if you bend it like that. See what I mean? Um, and so I was like, that can't be right. There must be some place for it to go. So I decided to look on the uh, Games Workshop website and let me show you. This is where they're putting him, at the front. And as you can see, his thing isn't even attached to the war machine. So if I was to do that with mine, let's show it here for all of you to see. There's no way for him to line up with the thing. It doesn't make any sense. Uh. Anyways, um, so I did all the crew member with reds, yellows, greens, and blues. The blue to specify that they are with a range projectile specialties units. Um, interesting ones to paint differently were these single piece Battle for Skull Pass guys because they're just, you know, single piece. You just put them on the sprue, glue it together, or glue the guy on the sprue, and, and that's about it. Rather than these multi part crew members where you have to actually pick different arm options and put them together. I'm sure that's not a good uh, thing to show because this is, this is another Battle for Skull Pass guy. He's got a, he's just one piece, oh, I still have to trim the mold lines. He's got a little bucket. So the way I paint water is that I use shadow gray and then I'll shade it with blue, a sermon blue, and then I'll gloss varnish it after highlighting up a little. But yeah, as you can see, I painted these guys all up. I just didn't manage to get for the dark brown beard. I didn't manage to paint them ginger or blonde yet, which is too bad. Um, but th that shouldn't take too long. I just wasn't able to get it finished in time for this video. And as you know, it's the finished video of the last video for my November painting project, so I wanted to get this out while there is still time. Looking at my clock, there's still eight minutes left. So, um, Wednesday, November 30th, eight minutes on the clock, I decided to stop. 
is a single piece battle for skull pass guy. I might paint up one of his power fists here, it, red, as an homage to the crimson fists, but I might not. I just thought it was funny they gave they gave the, these guys power fists. I think they are. I guess they're supposed to be gauntlets, but why would a dwarf engineer be wearing a gauntlet where everybody else has regular gloves? Makes no sense because he's not wearing any other armor except the regular dwarf chainmail skirt, so. Uh, Games Workshop. I also haven't been able to finish this guy yet, my battle standard bearer. And all I have to do for him really is the snake bite leather and um, skull white non metallic gold for the middle of the banner. Everything else is pretty much done, so that's all we need for him. Also, what I didn't manage to finish was this metal rune lord, which I um, started the beard for but I just wasn't able to get any further than that so he'll probably take me another hour to to get the base coats, washes and highlights done on him but um, it's a cool model I don't know I thought he was like swinging a hammer but I don't know if this is supposed to be like a stamp that he's hammering down or something uh, hammering a rune onto a piece of metal or or on, into the ground I don't understand it if he's like in the mid swing going down or up. If anybody understands what this model is supposed to be doing, then I'd love to know. So that's it for my dwarf project. And as you can see here, with my slayers in the back, my horde of slayers grew from I think it was like 10 with the Battle for Skull Pass plastic guy and these three command group guys in the front to now I got in my mail today 60 no not 60 um, 30 I got 30 yeah because I ordered on eBay and I was able to find this guy selling packets of five for only I think it was like ten dollars each which is you know a steal considering you get three in a blister or two or three in a blister I don't remember how, how much the regular troll slayers go into a blister but for like you know 15 16 17 18 with the price markup nowadays so I guess he was just getting rid of all of them and I was like I'll take all of them and this was like at the beginning of November and he just wasn't able to mail it out to me until now so any guy you see that's on a regular base without the sand on it yet is uh, a new guy that I just added to to my army but I'm gonna base them spray them and hopefully paint them all and um, yeah, it, it won't be with this project though, because this project is over. So looking back in the last month of painting, I was able to get one Lord character completely done. I was also to finish, I guess if you want to count the Thane, the Dwarf Lord in the Battle for Skull Pass plastic set, I finished him. I finished two units of warriors, one with hand weapon shield, one with great weapon. A unit of thunderers, a unit of quarrelers. Uh, what else? Oh, my converted unit of hammerers. And also three cannons and a grudge thrower. Am I missing anything? Along with all the crew. Plus, yeah, I think those are, those are things that I finished totally, completely, ready to be going on the table and beating things up. Um, and all the other stuff that I showed you tonight is things that I just couldn't finish in time. But. I hope you enjoyed watching Project Wars for the month of November. I'm gonna now get as far away from these guys as possible once I finish with these last things, just so I don't go insane and start another painting project, hopefully, in the future. Or I might do, you know, more unboxings, reviews, and other fun stuff. So stay tuned to the channel, hope you like it. Um, if you do, please click the like button, leave me a comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And, um,. Yeah, stay tuned for more. Thanks along for joining me. Thanks to Christopher from AJ Productions for inspiring me to do this project. And thanks for everyone who's written and encouraged me and pushed me to keep going and given me like video responses and stuff. And I'm, I'm really happy I got to the point where I did. And I'm glad to have you guys along with me. So, take care. This is Warbots Tay, signing off.